Well, not too far back, I was approached by a company selling this graph speed cutter. And when I saw it, I thought I had just the perfect application for it. Well, back in the midst of all these panoramic views that you've watched of my shop in the past, in the middle, kind of hidden, and I've never videoed it before, is one of my junkyard creations that I use to duplicate. I designed this to duplicate wood wagon axles to set the caster and camber or gather and swing into the wood axles. You can put the pattern on the right side and it'll duplicate on the left. It has two drive sprockets that are driven equal one to one ratio. And I drive it simply with a half inch Makita drill. And it's adjustable from 66 inches on down. So even though it's long enough to do a wagon axle, I can do single trees, spokes, whatever. Whatever goes on one side is duplicated on the other. The two slides on either side are out of an F10 loader from the rams on the cylinders. And I have this carriage that just slides along these two rams. And on this slide, I've attached my cutting head and simply use a four and a half inch Makita hand grinder. And to accommodate the different thickness in material, clear from a four by six wagon axle down to a inch and a half spoke, I made this attachment adjustable also. And since the initial design was intended for wagon axles, which have skeins on both ends of the axle, instead of moving the axle, I made this cutting head attachment movable to where it could attach to either side of the carriage. And at the opposite end of the drive head is the tailstock that I attach the two axle blanks to. And since I have my grinder attached vertically, it's also adjustable up and down. In the past, I tried a router and a straight bit but it didn't give me the accuracy that I liked. So then I went to this little Makita grinder and I put a little saw blade on it. It was better, but the saw blade is really too light. So when this graph speed cutter showed up, I figured I had just the place to test it out. The first thing I liked about the graph speed cutter when I first saw it was it only had three heavy teeth, but the carbide tips on them were long and heavy. When cutting patterns off of this lathe, it has a lot of side cutting. So these extra long carbide tips really were advantageous. The next thing I liked about the grass speed cutter when they approached me, and this was all by email, was there was no contract, there was no payment, there was no anything involved. All I had to do was test it out, see if I liked it. And I kind of figured if it helped me out here in the shop, I'd sure do a video for them. So I had a few old spokes around from car wheels, and they're kind of distinct, a little different than a buggy wheel or a, a wagon wheel spoke. So I had a few odds and ends, and I had one that I had used in the past, this long slender one. It's a real pronounced egg-shaped style in the body of it. And I thought that'd be just a good test for the speed cutter. Now a lot of these spokes are made out of hickory. And if you've worked hickory, you know you need to have pretty sharp tools. I've got a few hickory straps and I think I can find a couple that'll work.
Now the head of a car wheel spoke is pretty wide compared to a Sarvan buggy spoke. So I'm going to lay these out and kind of remove some of the extra excess wood around the body below the throat. Now whatever's being used as the pattern and the blank need to be held pretty securely. They have to have an exact one-to-one -one ratio. There can't be any slippage while the turning is taking place. So this stamp is designed to imprint the end of the blank so that it is held securely in relation to the pattern. Now on the blank side I have this extra long threaded tailstock. Sometimes my patterns are longer than the piece I actually need to turn. So I can put in a long pattern but yet turn a short blank. So turning these spokes, I'm going to try to get the platform of this carriage parallel to the spoke. It's not really a critical thing, but it just kind of keeps the, the saw blade square as it's cutting. And to help the carriage slide smoothly, I keep both rams pretty well coated with a Johnson's paste floor wax. Now this is one reason why I like my pattern to be longer than my blank. So that the carrier bearing is on the pattern well after the, the cutting wheel comes off the end of my, my blank stock. And now I can adjust my cutting depth so that my blank, or the finished result, will match the pattern. And if I'm cutting multiple spokes, or multiple whatever, 
just have to set this the first time. After that, it's good to go. So you can tell already this isn't a high production machine. The initial intent and purpose of this whole duplicator once again was for axles for wagons. But it's real handy when I need an oddball spoke, something that's not common or standard. And I don't stock a lot of automotive spokes, but when I got automotive wheels in, I can make what I need. If I order these special from someone who is a production spoke manufacturer, oftentimes it takes six to eight weeks. Well, if there's that kind of a time frame allowable, I can go ahead and send a pattern in and they'll make them. And oftentimes for less than what costs me in time to make these. But when I need a spoke and I don't have that option, this duplicator lathe allows me to reproduce any style that I put in for whatever it puts in on one side as a pattern it will duplicate on the other pretty exact so watching this speed cutter by graph cut away with these long carbide teeth when it's cutting this edge drain, those long teeth really make the difference. So this finished cut is nicer than the little small blade I was using before and by far nicer than the router bit. But it leaves a little light groove to it. It's no fault of it. It's really designed to cut that way. But I think, as usual, I'm going to tinker with it. Like I've said already before, they have nice long carbide teeth, but the ends are pretty round, and I think that's what's leaving some of the, the grooves. You can see it right here. Well, I've got a grinding wheel that'll work on carbides. I'm going to take and put these into a flat surface and see if that helps. But this little cutter blade has taken what I started out being inch and a half square stock down to this egg shape in one pass. In hickory. Works pretty well. So I'm going to give these flat edge teeth a try and see if it doesn't help. Now I don't have them exactly square, I just kind of free handed them in. So we'll see how it works.
Now I can see with my flat teeth, having a perpendicular saw is a little more critical. I need to make an adjustment in the platform. If I were to raise the cutting head up or lower the back end to where I had my teeth running flat with the pattern, I think we have it. So even though I had my saw or the blade not quite adjusted accurately, it didn't take much to sand those little marks out. I was pretty impressed, really. So from here, finishing out the tapered head and putting in the throat, that's all kind of different steps. But for this part of it, where I needed a good cutter, I think I'm going to enjoy using this speed cutter by Graf. Thanks Graf for letting me try it out. And to all the rest of you folks, once again, appreciate you watching.